And thanks so much for staying with us, everybody. Agriculture in Mississippi is one of the driving forces behind our state's economy. And joining us now via Zoom from the capital city, Mississippi Agriculture and Commerce Commissioner Andy Gibson. Commissioner, it's so good to have you on the coast because down here, our residents probably oftentimes don't have a chance to, to hear from you. Well, it's great to see you. I always enjoy coming to the coast. I'm glad to join you all by Zoom, but I'll be there uh, next month in person. Look forward to seeing folks there. Yeah, I know you're going to be covering kind of farmer initiative you have going with farmers markets, and we'll talk a little bit about that today and cover you when you're here in the coast then. I want to throw some numbers out at people because, again, on the, on the coast, people might not realize this. $8.83 billion to the state's economy. That's agriculture. Uh, directly or indirectly, about 17% of the state's workforce. 34,700 farms statewide. And everyone thinks here's the Agriculture Commissioner Andy Gibson worrying about cotton and soybeans. And that's true, but it's so much more, isn't it? It really is. You know, uh, from poultry to beef to blueberries and pecans and sweet potatoes, uh, I tell people all over the world, if it's worth growing, we grow it in Mississippi and we grow it better than anybody else. And it is the single biggest part of Mississippi's economy, agriculture, and our farmers who keep it all going. So thank a farmer every time you see one. Yeah, and there's there are some great initiatives underway, like these farm to table things that restaurateurs and other groups are doing, which is kind of putting even more of an emphasis on supporting our farmers. Uh, do you like programs like that? I'm sure you do. Absolutely. In fact, we are really in the process of launching a statewide initiative to, to bring the farm to table movement to every community uh, through our genuine Mississippi program to buy local, but also we want to create food hubs all across the state, including on the coast where people can come and buy local food. Uh, and that is good not only for our farmers, it's going to create new markets for them in, the, in terms of uh, process and storage of food for the off growing season, but also it's going to be good for our consumers who want to buy local, who want to support local uh, farmers, and in doing so, we're supporting our own economy. So it's a win-win-win. The farm-to-table movement is a great thing, and we want it to be a front and center in Mississippi. What are some of the difficult things for farmers uh, here in 2024? Uh, I mean, you can't control Mother Nature, so you can't see really anything about flooding. But just in terms of the supply chain issues we've seen over the last few years, inflation, which has been raging out of control for three years now, what challenges are farmers facing? Well, it's costing twice as much now to raise a crop compared to what it did just two or three years ago due to the inflation. On top of that, the uh, interest rate hikes that have gone in place that farmers rely on for credit, uh, those are really, really cutting into the bottom line and making it difficult. So. Our farmers are persevering through these pressures, but on top of that, uh, we had a really historic, unprecedented drought last year in 2023, and we thought it might do uh, irreversible damage to our crops last year, but in the end, you read that $8.3 billion value, that, that was turned out to be our second highest agriculture product production in the history of the state. So we're blessed with uh, underground water resources that a lot of states out west do not have, so we're, we're blessed with irrigation. And uh, all in all, farmers are resilient people and continue to keep putting the seed in the ground for the next year's crop. And uh, it's, it's happening again in 2024, and we're looking forward to a, a better year this year than we had in 2023. All righty, if I were to ask the average person out there which country is the most populated country on Earth, most would probably say China. The fact is it's India. 1.4 billion people, they, they surpassed China uh, recently. You just returned from India on a trade mission. What are the possibilities there? Well, the possibilities are tremendous. 1.4 billion people, the world's largest country, the world's largest market. And these are uh, people who want to buy American products. They love Americans and, uh, and uh, they are a growing economy. They're a emerging out of the third world type economy, but they are a nuclear power, a very growing, a fast growing economy. And in India, uh, they're really interested in buying American products, Mississippi products specifically. They're already buying a lot of cotton from Mississippi, 
and also wood products, forest products, which is typically our third largest product as a state, wood products. But uh, they were really interested in talking about blueberries, Mississippi's official state fruit. Uh, in South Mississippi, blueberries are such a big deal and they're so healthy and the, the health conscious uh, buyers of India are, are really looking for berries like blueberries and they're looking for nuts like pecans. So both of those fit Mississippi's uh, markets very well. Sweet potatoes, they're health conscious buyers. There's a growing middle class, they wanna eat healthy. And we had a lot of great discussions over a two week period with the good folks of India. And, and what I love about the Indian people is they're free people. They're having elections right now. Uh, the, the, the largest election in the history of the world is happening in India right now as 1.4 billion people go to the polls and vote over a three month period. Wow. And the interest well, that's fascinating. I didn't know that. Thank you. But then you were telling me uh, during the last commercial break that you're also preparing for an inbound trade uh, a mission of sorts. Who's coming in? Can you tell us? Next week, uh, the, the, the first week of June, we've got the Dominican Republic and Mexico and Spain, uh, Great Britain and Vietnam and Poland. They're coming to the state of Mississippi. We're hosting them in a inbound uh, wood product trade mission. So they're coming here to explore our wood uh, inventory, both softwood, pine and hardwood. And uh, they're looking to buy forest products. So that's one of the things that we at the Department of Ag do that most people may not know about is uh, really we, we do a lot of focus on the international trade. In fact, uh, one out of every three acres of Mississippi's production is destined for an international market. So we, we wanna make sure those markets stay strong and they grow for the benefit of our farmers and our economy as a whole. So we're, we're excited about next week as well. All righty, exporting Mississippi products. It doesn't get any better than that when it comes uh, to the overall Mississippi economy. Commissioner, I'm gonna leave you 20, 30 seconds, but we are gonna have you back. So tell us Thanks. about this local kind of farmer's market thing, I believe later in June, you're gonna be working on. Looking forward to it. We're gonna, we, we wanna have a local food hub there on the Gulf Coast where people can come by all the local aquaculture, seafood, as well as our ag products, blueberries and so forth from South Mississippi. And not only uh, support the local economy, but support uh, tourism. It'll become a destination for people to come buy local, genuine Mississippi products. And we're excited to talk about it uh, soon with you. Okay, you said tourism, we, we're out of time, but agri-tourism where people visit farms is actually a big thing. When I yeah. went to Italy, it was huge. We went to farms all over Italy. It was fascinating. We'll have to talk about that next time. Mississippi okay. Agriculture and Commerce uh, Commissioner Andy Gibson, thanks so much for being with us on the Mississippi Coast. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks, Dave.